spring Like a wildfire in my heart Sunday morning, hallelujah And it's lasting all week long the church everybody you're not gonna wait back <laughs> Kate oh yeah thank you Julie I appreciate it I was waving to you Kate wow all right Let's try it again there we go <laughs> that's better I got I don't want to leave you guys out over here and everybody down here so yes joy 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 down in my heart uh-oh thank you Connor oh thank you you guys are blessing me. All right, uh, excited we could be together today. Uh, lots of good things happening and taking place. Just uh, God is good. Welcome, welcome, welcome to church. Before we get going, uh, just a couple announcements. Directory update. If you want to be in our directory or you had some life changes, moving, maybe had some kids, um, anything like that, phone number change. If you want to fill one of these out for us, there's a box out in the foyer and some of these slips, I, I believe, out there. Um, so if you want to be in our directory, now's the time to do it. Joy said technically today is the last day, so, um, so that is that. Um, tonight, Bible for Dummies class is at 7 p.m. I would encourage you to come to that if you want to know more about the Bible and how it all fits together. It is... It is good. People keep coming in, which is good. Uh, they, can, they can talk and talk, which is wonderful, because that means we love each other, like each other, friends with each other. Yeah, this is good. People keep coming. Mark's going to fill up water balloons and throw them at people. That's his plan. That's his plan. Um, so you guys are excited this morning. This is good. Good, good, good. Good things. There is some other things this week. We have our youth costume contest upstairs. Not scary, nothing like that. Most creative costume wins $100, okay? Uh, so want to see your youth be creative in what they're doing and, and uh, 
just like to have a lot of fun. We'll have some pizza, other prizes, and stuff like that that we'll give away. So that's this Wednesday, uh, the 30th, upstairs at 7 p.m. There is um, lots of groups taking place, Bible studies, um, things like that. Um, there's a Monday night men's Bible study at Pastor Mark's house. There is a ladies' Sunday night Bible study uh, at Trisha's house. Uh, her contact's in here in the bulletin. Um, next week, you guys don't want to miss this. Okay, exciting. Congregational vote. Uh, <laughs> it's during both services. Uh, it's for elders, deacons, confirmation, uh, bu budget confirmation. Uh, Dana reminded me earlier, first service. Uh, Wednesday night, there is a short little uh, business meeting where Keith will come and do his thing. His thing is money. <laughs> so he'll talk to you about some money uh, and all that stuff. And so uh, that's Wednesday night. Um, all that good stuff. So just ex I really am excited you guys could be here. God is good. Let's pray. Lord, just thank you so much for, God, just excited people this morning. God, they just couldn't stop talking to each other, which is a blessing, which is good. God, we're, we're grateful for that. Lord, it means we, we love each other. And, and how did we get to this place? You brought us here. Lord, we're grateful for this place that we could come together and, and worship you. Come together and grow in your name. Come, come together and just um, be fed by you. So, Lord, here we are. We give you this offering. We ask that you bless it. We ask that your will be done. God, and we just come before you, Lord, with our, with our prayer request. God, I wish we could just stand up here and, and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray for our, the things that we're walking through, the things that we're going through. God, and you see us. You know us. You know our hurts. You know our pains. You know our fears and our failures. God, and you're there through it all. You're not there forgetting about us. God, you're there holding us. You're there carrying us. God, you're there putting the things in our life that we need so desperately. So, Lord, I pray that we would just see your power revealed in this life, in the situations and the circumstances that we're walking through, Lord. Let us just see your power. Let us see your glory. Let us see your goodness. So, God, we thank you so much for all that you're doing and all that you've done, God. And, and we just, we love you. So, Lord, we welcome you to this place for this time of worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
most beautiful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. Oh God, there. You know, I was telling uh, in the first service, you know, the background of that reminds me of space, you know, and how ultimate space is and how infinite it is and how all those things out there are hidden until you get really close to them. And, you know, that's kind of the way God is, you know, looks really, really good. And the closer you get, the more beautiful he looks, the more glorious he looks, the more wonderful he looks and all of those things out there and all the things here on earth like the changing of the colors, the fall seasons, the winter, the spring, the summer, all of those he did for us. All of that was created for us. And you know, the, the amazing part that I think about it is he did it for one man first. He did it for Adam first. Just one person. He loves you the same as he loves Adam. So if you were the only person, he would still do it for you. And he still does it for us. The colors have changed just like they did hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. They're still changing for us. His love never stops. It never fails. We don't have to worry about whether God loves us or not. He shows us every day that he loves us by taking care of us. You know, his love is so abounding. We have no idea where it starts or where it ends. It began before we were here, and it'll be here long after we've joined him because he's that reckless with his love for all of his creation and us being his greatest. Oh, uh -huh. 
short all the time you know but it says in the song it says even when I was your foe even when I was against you and did everything that I wasn't supposed to do he was still fighting for me his love goes that deep see his love will defend you against anything and a lot of times his love defends you against things you don't even know you're battling there's a whole different side to the world where we live spiritually and that's where God is and he's fighting for us all the time and he'll defend you no matter what you're against in your life you are my joy you are my song you are the Your love defends me. Your love. 
breath. I patted his back in the first service. He was so, you were so sweaty. Oh, my gosh. I'm sure I'm glad you got that talent, man. And I'm glad God loaned it here to us. Sure, I'm glad you, we got it on loan here. So, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Beautiful, wonderful, wonderful. Mm-hmm. Good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody. Thank you for coming. Good morning. Haircut, yeah, gosh, my Peru haircut, man, what happened to all that that was on top, it all kind of slip sliding away, slip sliding away, yeah, man, Here it does. the only thing that gets thin is your hair. That's true for me, for sure. Okay, okay, glad you came. Thanks for coming, thanks for coming. Uh, three weeks we go to Peru, be with you three Sundays. Since I got three weeks to put on you here. Okay, people. Sunday today, Sunday next week, and Sunday the next week, and then we leave on Monday. So stop it. There's a verse about women being quiet in church, isn't there? (laughs) What? Ask John MacArthur. MacArthur, Why? Did he get in trouble for that? I'm not preaching that today. He was what? Oh, he was? Oh, I'll be quiet. I don't want to start controversy. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. That was a cultural thing. You know that, right? You don't know that. So, Man, I got in trouble. I didn't even mean to. It's, I feel like I'm at home right now. <laughs> I get in trouble and I didn't even try. It, wouldn't, it just was just goofing around and I'm in trouble. Okay, good to see everybody. Uh, Chris, how we doing? Chris, Ball, how we doing? Doing great? You got a lot to do today, don't you? You're running around stuff and... All right, thank you for coming. Since we have three weeks, three weeks left, three Sundays left, we have three Sunday stuff coming today and stop it. We're going to be in 1 Peter for the next three weeks, Lord willing, right? Lord willing. So love, I I don't know, there's just something in me. How do you say this? There's probably something in you that is just natural for you that is just something you love to do, right? Something you very much enjoy. I don't know why. Why? But I just enjoy, God put something in me as a little boy. As a little boy, we get candy bars for memory verses, right? Candy bars for memory verses. It started a lot of bad habits in my life, but I got a lot of, I got a lot of good scripture in me. I really did, and I just, I fell in love with the scripture. I, I, I you, you don't know all these stories, but I prayed to the Lord one time, got kind of out of college, was getting married, prayed to the Lord and said, Lord, if I get that job down there in Dayton, Lord, if I get that job in Dayton, I'll go to that Bible college just just a couple miles away. If you give me that job, I'll go to that Bible college. I got that job. Then I had to go to that Bible college. Woo! Woo! Well, it's crazy. I'd go over and I, if I took two classes, one started at six, the other one started at like eight. So I was in Bible college till 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. So there was a bunch of years there where I was doing, them were long days when you're downtown, down in Dayton and you got to come home at 10, after a class at 10. But I remember driving home. I remember driving home and God revealing his word to me so much that I'm just crying on the way home saying, God. I never knew that was all. I never knew how much you loved me. I never knew you knew it all. I never knew you knew it all. I never knew you put it all together. Lord, I never knew the, I never knew the big, God, you're showing me the big thing. You're so amazing. You're so amazing. You're so amazing. And I've had that in my heart all these years. So 
I, I, I never like standing in front of people. I, I'm never, I don't do this because I like standing. But I, I, I enjoy teaching the scripture. Just always enjoyed that. Learning and growing and knowing and 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 every the more you closer you get to God, the, the more you find out you don't know, and the more you know you need to chase Him some more. And we live in a crazy world in a day, an hour like no other. The very last act of the most amazing play, the creation of God and His His uh, well His acts, I guess the church. The glory of his son Jesus. You know what I mean? The, I, I don't know if we live up to that, but I mean, that someday the Lord Jesus will present to the Father his church. Glorious and beautiful. You know what I mean? I think there'll be a big announcement in heaven when we all get there at some point, and the Lord Jesus will say, Father, this is my church. I present it to you without spot or wrinkle. Not because we're not we got a lot of spots, a lot of wrinkles. But because of who Jesus is, uh, here's your church, Father. I can see the Lord saying the things like he did in creation. It's really good. Welcome aboard. Welcome to heaven. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I've been waiting on you. I've been waiting on your voice to rejoice up here. I've been waiting. So we're in 1 Peter today. Pretty excited about that. Really enjoy Peter. You know who Peter was. Peter's one of the... Apostles, uh, the inside man that really God revealed himself. I, not because Peter was, I don't know, I can just relate. Peter, the king of knuckleheads, you know what I mean? Knucklehead, but God loved him, and, and he had a desire in his heart to know God, and, and the Lord revealed himself to him. I pray that's happening to you. I, I do. I, I pray that God is revealing himself in, in, in a personal way where God, you know it's God, it's not man, where God's just revealing himself to you and you know it's him, right? You're going to throw me some verses up here, Colin? You're waiting on me, I guess. I want to start at verse 1, sir, if I can. I know you're rushing me, but that's... Thank you, friend. We never have this problem in the first service. We never have any verse problems in the first service. The only thing that's different is Betty's back there in the second service. The facts are what the facts are. That's all I can say. Peter, Apostle of Jesus Christ, I pray yet. Lord, bless our time together today. Lord, let the word be powerful and amazing. It's your word. It is powerful and amazing. Lord, deliver that thing in, in, great, in great strength, Lord, in great deliverance, Lord, where you, you, you just plow it into us today. Lord, use a preacher. You choose to do it that way sometimes, Lord. And if you choose to use me today, Lord, let me be the instrument that, that brings the heart of God, the very words of God right into us. So, Lord, use, use me today and do great things. Let us leave this place just mind blown that you've revealed things to us we did never saw, we would never seen it that way before. Let your word open to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims disper of the dispersion and that and that and that. Th those are providences in Asia Minor, which is now modern day Turkey. Peter's writing to these believers and there's lots of theories out there in this whole thing. But a lot of people believe Peter is in Rome, imprisoned, when he writes this letter. There's a crazy emperor named Nero. He's beginning to persecute Christians where he throws them in the pens with lions for sport. He burns them. He, you know. At one point, Rome burns, and Nero, they think Nero may have done it because he ends up building a big palace in the burnt section of Rome. But he blames it on the Christians. And there becomes, begins to be very great persecution upon the church in Rome. And Peter is writing here because Christians are fleeing. They're running there. So he's writing here to these Christians that now have dispersed out of, out of Italy and out just running, running from persecution. And he's especially writing to these that have been through a lot that are living in Asia Minor. 
He calls them elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. The elect. I think I got it on the board here. This is exactly, you, you know, you know you're an elect. You're, you've been picked by God. You know that? All of you that are in Christ Jesus, the Lord elected you. He picked you. The other verse says, you know, you didn't pick him. He chose you. That in the six and a half billion people or so that are on planet Earth, you're one of those that God picked. Isn't that amazing? God picked me. God picked me. Are you crazy? God picked me. Are you... Lord, what are you thinking? I'm not. Why did God pick me? It says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. God the Father had a knowledge of me, a foreknowledge of me, that, that, that he purposed me for something. He picked me for something. He knew, he knew my heart. He knew that I had a heart that would say yes to him. He, he picked me. God created me, created me, and then he picked me. It's really amazing. I don't know if you, I'm pretty excited about that, that I realized today that the one thing I'm learning in the scripture today was I was elected, by, I was selected by God. I'm, I'm selected. God, the Father, but he had some kind of knowledge about me before he, he picked me. Yeah. You ever not been picked for something? <laughs> That's like, oh, you ever been the kid, you know, when they're selected teams? Everybody gets picked and you're... At some point they get to the place where they just split up all the... Okay, we're, good, we're done picking the good people. Let's split the rest of them up. Just, just. It's this idea that you're elected. You're picked by God. There's a foreknowledge of God. God knew something about you that he, he called. He has you in this place today because there's a fore. God, God, it's so incredible that God had a knowledge of me, that God had a knowledge of who I would be, that God had a knowledge of what my calling would be, that God had a knowledge that this very day would happen, that this very... There's nothing by mistake. There is no mistake. There's no accidents. There's no random. Trish has a story right here with her today of a random phone call. She thought she was called. That's the craziest thing ever. And her friend's with us today. She called thinking she was calling somebody. She ended up calling this gal, thinking it was somebody else, right? So amazing, so stinking amazing. I tell you, I, my story, I've told this before. My dad worked for a union shop. And they'd go to strike all the time. And back in the day, when they went on strike, there was some kind of union pay, and it was not very good. So my dad would always try to find odd jobs during a strike period. But we had an aunt that lived pretty close to us. She, she, she was a hairdresser. She had her own beauty shop out of her home. And when my dad got, my, my dad didn't have any brothers or sisters. His mother was super poor from the hills of Kentucky. But my aunt did people's hair, and she stashed away money. She always had cash money stashed away. So my dad would get in trouble, and she lived pretty close to us. My dad would get in trouble financially. We couldn't pay a bill during the strike time. He'd go to my Aunt Rushi and borrow money. And he'd always say to her, Rushi, I'm sorry, i got to borrow money, but i got to pay bills. You know, i got three, three boys, and they're, they're pigs, man. And my Aunt Rushi would always... And my dad would go back to work, and he'd be buried in bills. Sometimes they'd go on strike for a long time, and he'd be buried in bills, and he'd be trying to catch up. And, and he'd always go to my Aunt Rushi saying, I'm playing, I'm paying you back. I'm going to pay. I haven't forgot about you the whole thing. So my Aunt Rushi one day, who was a strong, strong Christian woman, she said, hey, how about this time? Instead of paying me back in money, go to church ten times, and I'll call it, I'll call it done. I'll call it forgiven. So my dad said, I don't know how I'm ever going to catch up with her. I'll go to church ten times. I think it was on the tenth time. The pastor of the church didn't speak that day. A man came that spoke who had been shot in the neck. I'll never forget this. And he spoke with a real raspy voice. And somehow that really caught my dad's attention. And we would come in, the Hackworth mom and dad and the three rugrats, 
We'd come in, we'd sit as close as we could to the exit door, and as soon as amen was said, the car was started in the parking lot, man. I'm telling you, we didn't stay around shake hands. I mean, as fast as we could come in, we'd come in, we'd sit in the parking lot till we thought we heard the music playing, come in the back, sit in the back, as soon as amen was up, phew, out the door. Hey, my dad was keeping record. Nine, ten. Right? But this day, this man, I don't know, he just spoke to my dad. He didn't have a dad, my dad didn't have a dad. Something connected. And he said, hey, if there's anybody here today none know the Lord Jesus as their Savior, come forward. My dad gets up and goes forward. Couldn't believe it. My mom goes up the very same time. My mom goes up there. So crazy. And my family started serving the Lord. We started going to Sundays. We started going to church so much. Church became so important to us. My dad had lived like a heathen for so long. He wanted so much change. He needed so much change. He realized the love of God, the cleansing of God, the goodness of God came over him, and he was saved, man. He, the Lord radically changed my father. And we started going to Sunday school and eating a lot of candy bars. <laughs> my Aunt Rushi passed away oh, a long time ago now. And I keep saying, Aunt Rusey, thank you for your, your faithfulness. I don't know if she ever did anything in the church. I don't know if she ever had any big ministry. I just know she had some cash buried in, in the second drawer down behind some stuff hidden, you know what I mean? And, 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 and she gave that, and one day she said, let's just, let's just trade the cash for church. And that was life-changing. And the Lord, hey, through all that, the Lord called me. He picked me. He picked me. I can't believe it. And I told you just a minute ago, Lord, if I get that job, I'll go to Bible college. I got that job. Nothing's random. Nothing's, you know, I got picked. So I'm on God. Well, the next verse says, look at this. The foreknowledge of God and the Father in sanctification of the Spirit, meaning sanctification means set apart. So the Spirit set me apart now for a godly purpose, right? And then this life, this, this, this is just what life is for us Christians, you know. We've got these carnal things. We've got the bills we've got to pay and things we've got to do and flat tires we've got to fix and all the stuff that happens in a week, right? All the things we go through, up and down. And we work and we do and we pay and we, there's some carnal things we've got to do to deal with, when I say carnal, not sinful, I'm just saying natural things we have to do because we live on planet Earth but beyond that, God set me apart for his purpose. What happens to Christians, and I'm going to get real hard on you here for, real quick, okay? I love you. Can I say that in advance? I love you very much. I don't have a lot of time now because I've been set apart. Hey, to really get too involved in a bunch of the secular stuff I used to be involved in. I just don't. I don't, I do not. You know, what's the average in America? Average American watches four hours of television a day. What? I uh, grew up as a little boy, the big red machine. Mid-70s, you know, Pete Rose and Johnny Bench. And I can tell you every player in every position on the big red team, I can, Okay. I can tell you the pitchers. I can tell you their whole, man, I remember my mom putting us to bed at 9 o'clock and baseball games going till 10 o'clock. And I had a little, little transistor, a little radio, hey, hidden in my bed. And I'd turn on the Reds game as low as I possibly could. I still listen to radio at night real low. I do. But as a kid, I'd listen to radio real low. Trying to listen to the Reds, you know, up till 9, 45, 10 o'clock, you know, every night. My mom never knew. I just, I'm only confessing that now because she'll, she'll never know. She'll never know. <laughs> and we listened to the Reds. I knew, knew their batting averages. I knew what they were doing. You know what I mean? I was so... In, but the Lord purposed me for... You know what? I don't have time for... I just don't. 
God called me. I'm, I'm elected by God. I, by the foreknowledge of God, God called me to something spiritual. I have a perfect, you know, I've got these carnal things i got to do. i just got to do them. I, man, i got kids to feed and, and beyond and beyond. You know, there's all kinds of stuff in, in our world that we got to do, right? But beyond that, I, I don't want you to know God picked me. And because God picked me, the Holy Spirit set me aside for something for him. And i got to be ca- very careful about my time that I'm using it for my godly purpose. I started realizing pretty quick when I, when I was going after work to a Bible college three, four hours a night after, after work. Oh, my goodness, the Lord's going to kill me. The Lord wants to pull me into stuff that's so amazing. God wants to reveal himself to me so much. God would call me for something and use me for something. The church needed me. Some of y'all, let me just say this to you. The church needs you so much. The church is trying to do a spiritual thing. Not just here, but around the world. This church is trying to do something here and around the world. The church needs you. We will do more when you decide you're involved. You're going to be involved. You can only do so much with what you got, right? That's all you can do. It's what you... Pastor, where do I serve? Listen, I will tell you this right now. I'm not an administrative pastor. I'm not trying to figure out where you serve. I got plenty to do what I'm doing, right? I had to figure out where I serve in the body, and it was very prayerfully, very... It became my responsibility to find my place in the body of Christ. That makes sense? Find your place. I'm, as a, some pastors go around and try to help you find your place. I'm not going to help you find your place. I just don't have time to help you find... I'm having trouble getting my business done. Right? But you're all welcome. We love you so much. Julie's the best Cleopatra I've ever seen in my life. Some of you guys are so amazing. Some of you are so, let me do it this way. All of you are so amazing. (laughs) Let me, can can I just be really hard for a minute? But zero times anything is zero. And it's really easy to be a zero. Right? That's hard, man. That's, think about that thought. If I do zero, I produce zero. Right? Zero times zero, zero times anything is... Yesterday, yesterday we, uh, there was a funeral yesterday in Dayton. And the place where the funeral dinner was going to be, well, it, we had to walk through a bar area. What was so crazy was the big screen TV in the bar was on the big Ohio State game yesterday. Me, in the past, boy, I went to Ohio State. I went to Ohio State. I engineered out of Ohio State. You know what I mean? That's where I went to school. All of a sudden, I'm big into Ohio State. You know, big, big, big into Ohio State. But all of a sudden, we're trying to carry food in in the rain, walking through right through the projector screen. <laughs> of all these people watching Ohio State, it was like, sorry. But... Man, we're getting soaking wet, carrying food to this funeral dinner that's in this kind of crazy setting, you know what I mean? But we got a job. God called us for something. Hey, it happened to be a funeral. We're trying to do ministry, you know? And all of a sudden, what was on that screen didn't matter at all. It didn't matter at all. I was soaking wet, carrying mashed potatoes. You know what I mean? And I just thought, Lord, thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me from this stuff that amounts to nothing. That's really hard, isn't it? Because Ohio State's doing pretty good this year. A few years ago, somebody gave us a boat. That was so awesome. Connor and Cole were just the right age. We got a tube, big tube. Put it on the back of this boat. I take them out there. They thought it was fun. I saw it as punishment. I get that boat going fast enough. I'd throw them boys off that tube, and their bodies would just skip 
across the water. And they'd get out of the water going, oh, and I'd be like, a <laughs> isn't this fun, kids? After about an hour, we just put the boat up because they were half dead. I always thought, Lord, you can't beat them anymore. Take them tubing. We got to the place we're so busy. We, we can't take a boat. We don't have time to get a boat. We don't. And I know I'm coming at you really hard. I know this is toe-crushing preaching. But I was elected. I was picked by God. Hey, and the Spirit sanctified. The Spirit separated me from this world. Look at this. It gets crazier. For obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, meaning Jesus wants me just to obey. So the Father picked me. The Spirit set me apart, and Jesus just wants me to obey. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are in this verse. It's really amazing. You see that? It's really, so, Paul's writing, this is what's so crazy, Paul's writing to these believers that had been so persecuted, they were running for their life. And Paul's saying, hey, because you're running for your life, don't, don't, don't lose your way. You got picked by God. You got picked. In our society, it's like, don't get so busy with everything else. You were picked by God. You got picked by God. In three weeks, I got to go to Peru for a couple weeks. You know what I mean? Why am I going there? God called me to it. Really, he did. I've been 40, 50 times to Peru in my life. That's been a lot of money. It's, it's not exciting for me anymore. I like to take new people. I, it's just really fun to take, go with a group of people and have fun with it. But it's work. It's hard. My body, the whole thing, and the whole thing is, why, why do I do it? I want to honor God with my life. I want to honor God with my life. That's something God called me to. Trust me. Watching Judge Judy would be a lot easier. <laughs> got to like that girl. You just got to like her. Right? I, I've always loved studying the Bible. I, I'm not, I don't, I don't consider myself that great of a public speaker. I know I'm nothing to look at. The Lord puts me on a stage. I don't want to be on a stage. The last thing I want to do is stand in front of people. Get a load of this. how I honor God with my life. It's what God called me to. It's what God called me to. He picked me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, right? Right now, all of us get to hear his glorious gospel. Right now, the preacher of the church is stepping on our toes right now because the Lord has picked us. He picked us, and he separated us, and he wants us to obey him. And the preacher is just coming along saying, well, that's what Peter wrote. That's hard preaching. But Christian life, hey, Christian life isn't about living after the world. Christian life's about living for God. You know, there's two ways you can live this life. One is you can do whatever you want to do. Two is you can honor God with your life. And when I came to the Lord, when the Lord picked me, when I got picked, when you got picked, I said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, the greatest the greatest thing that ever happened to me is the God of it all. The one that controls time and space. He shows us how great he is by space. Does that make sense? I know Lori referred to that. God, in showing us who he is, lets us every night look out there at the stars and realize, look how stinking big he is. I shouldn't have put stinking in there, but... Whoa! For me to realize that that light I see from that star way off in the distance, hey, that light is traveling at, what is it, 
286,000 miles per second travel, and that light I'm seeing came from that planet probably years ago, four, most of them, four years ago, the light I'm seeing left that planet, you know what I mean, traveling 286,000, is that right, 186,000, 186,000 miles per second, and that God picked me? I see some of the descriptions of the angels. That God who's over all those angels, pick me. That God that knew how much of a percentage of oxygen and nitrogen and that God that knew how much gravitational pull and God that knew how that and God is a, the most amazing scientist you've ever, God the greatest scientist ever, you know what I mean? That God full of all wisdom and all, pick me, the dumbest dude on planet earth. If it hadn't been for the Lord, I'd picked wrong every time. You know what I mean? If it hadn't been for the Lord in my life, if it was, should have been A, I'd have picked B every time. You know, make mistakes left and right. Made mistakes left and right. Make mistakes all the time. But the Lord gets in my heart, and the Lord begins to, I'm set apart for him. The Lord begins to give me some wisdom, and all of a sudden I start picking the right answer. So much in that verse right there. Blow your mind. In review, I got picked. You got picked. The, the Holy Spirit sets us apart, right? And Jesus just wants us to obey. He didn't say we had to raise the money. He didn't say, he just said obey, just obey. He'll, he'll make a way. And then it says, grace to you and peace be multiplied. So if you're living in this thing God called you to, then, then that grace and peace ought to be all over you. So, uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm standing in the eye of a hurricane. You know what I mean? It's all swirling around me, but right there in that eye, I'm just safe as I can be. The safest place you could ever be, the place you want to be, is in the center of God's will for your life. Blessed be the God and the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Basic Christianity, right? Jesus lived, he died, he rose again. What's that mean? To us. We'll live, die, and raise again, right? We'll live, we'll be with the Lord, we'll live forever, right? So we have this big phrase in here, this great mercy, this abundant mercy from God that gives us a living hope. What do I got? I got this amazing hope. If you get me talking about it, I'll talk the rest of the day about it. Man, I'm just telling you. You know what hope I got? I got a hope that the streets are made by, of gold, you know, and there'll be a tree and there'll be a crystal river, and the, my God will be the light, man. I got a hope that I got a mansion built for me, and that God is good, and I'll rejoice and rejoice in heaven for all of eternity. Right? Not only God called me, he set me apart. He, God, the Lord Jesus wants me to obey. But he gives me this big hope. That, hey, And the reason why I think it's right here, the next thing and the thought is, and every time I get down, I just think about what God has ahead for me. I'm really good. I'm really good at, in my own mind, every time I get down, thinking about, no, what's, what's ahead is too good. What's it? This is, this is the devil trying to get me down. Hey, because what's ahead is too good. The devil doesn't want me rejoicing. Hey, but what's ahead for me is so good. It's so amazing. Listen, I got a living hope that's alive in me, and it's bigger than all the stuff that could ever come. You know what I mean? It, it, it remain, it, it's so alive in me that the Lord will have me forever and ever and ever and ever. You know what I mean? That I got nothing to fear. I don't have to fear death. I don't have to fear nothing. Right? That hope in me alive is so powerful. It's so strong. Nothing in this world is going to take that away. Every time I run into a trial, Lord, I got a living hope. 
if the worst thing that ever happened to me is I die, which is the worst thing that could happen to me, right? <laughs> I'll blink. I'll blink and be in the presence of God. You know what I mean? I'll be translated so stinking fast from death to life. I'll wake up in a new, what's the theological word? A new... A new body part is just the bonus, man. That's the bonus to it. I'll work up, wake up in a... Wake up in glory. I'll just do that. I'll wake up in the most glorious thing. My eyes. Man, I'm going to have to wear a welding mask for a couple of weeks, you know what I mean? Just get my eyes just used to how bright it is up there. By the way, when we get to heaven... I. I'm going to be not going to, here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to I just want you to know, this is going to be, I'm just telling you. You're going to look at your window there in heaven someday. Well, Pastor Mark's going to be going, zoom, right past your house, running past your house. And they're like, who is that? Well, that's Pastor Mark, Jeannie with me. Me and Jeannie be running. The bad knee people, the bad knee people. We'll be busting it, man. We'll be out there. Her pigmentation makes her faster than me, so she'll be ahead of me. She'll be ahead of me, right? So I'll be behind a little bit, but she'll be, she'll be a streak, man. She'll be, boom! I'll be coming up the rear. Be eating her dust. I don't know what you're all laughing about. It's the truth. Anyhow, hey, we'll be running down. You'll be, the people you look out the window say, who's running by? Jeannie and Mark, they're running by again. Why are they running by? They're just showing off. Last 20 years of their life, they weren't able to run much, so they're just, they're just flaunting it. Be knocking on your door. You come to the door and say, you want to race? I, I can laugh. I'm telling you. We're all, it's in this chapter, we're all like grass that is, is for a moment and then it all fades away. That's in this chapter. We're all but grass, right? And the Lord fills us Christians with this hope, with this, the hope is, <laughs> I won't really, yeah. I got the kind of hope in me. I'm going to, I'm going to heaven, man. Right? I'd love for that to just be alive, and it's just us to be reminded that the devil, the best thing you do is try to discourage the best thing, but he can't steal that hope, man. He cannot steal that. Listen, the only way you let the devil steal hope is if you get caught up in your problem, man. If you get your eyes off, the, off, the, off of God and on your problem, you'll get stunk down in that quicksand. But you keep your eyes on the Lord, there's a living hope that's bigger than all of your troubles and trials and all of your, Right? Sometimes the devil tries to get you working, looking at your trial so much that you can't even walk in that godly purpose. You, it's, oh, it's a big old diversion tactic. To an inheritance incorruptible, this is part of that living hope. To inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved, for, reserved in heaven for you, for me. I have a reservation. You ever been excited to go on vacation? Right? You ever look at the brochure and go, Woo! White sandy beaches, man. I'm always looking for how many hammocks are tied in the trees. That's what I'm looking for. I always say, when I go on vacation, I'm going to find me a hammock. Woo-wee, look at that view of the ocean. Woo-wee. Whoa, that's pretty exciting. Look at them waterfalls. Look at that. Wow, look at that. I can't wait to go. I can't wait to get there. I can't wait. I can't wait. Heaven's going to dust every bit of that, man. 
Heaven's better than a two weeks in Cancun any day, you know what I mean? <laughs> Reserved in heaven for you, for me. Who, keep, who are kept by the power of God? Oh, a whole other thought here. So all of us that have this living hope that has a reservation in heaven that can't fade away, God is telling us now who are kept by the power of God. What? The Lord keeps me too? The Lord takes care of me too? You see how powerful this is? Peter's kind of laying this thing out for us, you know. Hey, you have got elected by God. Well, honey, you got elected by God. You got elected by him, and he set you apart for his work. And if you obey him, you got an inheritance. Oh, oh, oh child, oh, child. Oh, child, you got to, you, you can't believe what the Lord has for you. Then he comes along and says, but you're already kept by the power of God. I married that girl back there. And I know I've not been very good at showing it, but that's the love of my life. Yeah, she is. She'd always say, I've always put work first. Well, I'm a man. Never really meant to ever put it ahead of her, but work is just always so time consuming. My love has always been her. My work has just been something I feel like I'm obligated to have to do. Does that make sense? And I get to do the best kind of work. I get to work with the best people in the world. But I, one thing I've always wanted is I've always wanted her to be proud of me. And I always wanted to take good care of her. I always wanted, even if I couldn't be, I wanted her to... I want to take good care of Someday she'll say, hey, my husband's an idiot, but he took good care of me. I wore him out on that puppy thing, and I got a puppy. <laughs> and, and this is the scripture, now listen to me. This is the scripture that reminds us again that we're kept by the power. We that God called... God picked us. We're kept by the power of God. We're kept. He takes care of us. You believe that? Do you believe that? How many of y'all are blessed? Y'all blessed? Anybody blessed in here? Anybody? Y'all been blessed? You probably could say, yeah, and the Lord's been good to me. So, so good to me, right? You are so, so good. I think we sang that today, right? So, so good to me, right? In this you greatly rejoice. Okay. You don't have to. I'm making a joke, you. Uh, to me, by the time we get to verse 6 here, He's, he's kind of summing up, God called you. He set you apart. He wants you to walk in obedience. You got this great inheritance, and God keeps you by his power. In this you greatly rejoice. Okay, in the Pentecostal church I grew up in, it went something like this. When I think of his goodness and all he's done for me, when I think of the goodness and how he set me free, I could dance, 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 dance all night, all night. That was rejoicing in the Pentecostal church I grew up in, right? When I think of his goodness and all he's done for me, when I think of his goodness how he set me free, I could shout, 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 shout all night, right? You got any of that in you? You got any, some of that in you? I greatly rejoice. God called me. Ow! Right? It set me apart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Right? Been so, so good to me. Right? I got a, a reservation in a heavenly place. Woo! Woo! 
And I'll rejoice. God is good. God is good, 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 good. He's so good. I almost feel like I, I can't adequately even preach. I can't even adequately preach the, the goodness of God. I, there ain't words to describe. Can't describe heaven with words, you know what I mean? Can't describe God's love with words. You can't describe God's goodness with words. You can't describe how we paid for our sin with words. You can't describe. It's all beyond our ability to speak words. Peter trying here to get us to greatly rejoice. Even though we're on the run for our lives, don't lose don't lose, don't lose, don't lose this understanding of who you are and how special you are to God, how God picked you and what God has for you. Right? Yes. That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, that's that line, now get me. Remember I told you in the beginning, a lot of Rome burnt... We don't know if Peter was just writing that and Rome was to burn in the future or Rome had just burnt. We don't know. We're unsure. But though it tested by favor, we found to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That my faith, how precious, it's, it's more precious than gold. I want to say something about how people, one idol in this world is money. And how Christians that get caught up in money, hey, get caught up in idol worship. They get caught up in, when what the Lord has to give me is more precious than gold, more precious than money. What God is given, what God does, what God is, and all that is more precious than gold. Me being able to rely on God is more precious than gold. What I have in heaven is more precious than gold. The thing that God's doing with me is more precious than gold. All the, in believing and seeing God do great things, all that stuff's more precious than gold. Why do I want to be after money when, when what God has is so much more valuable than money? I try to teach, you work, you earn a dollar, right? You'll spend that dollar, right? You get me? And then you got to work, earn a dollar, right, to spend that dollar. But in God's economy, hey, everything you do for him is an investment that's made for eternity, right? And you're going to receive, this sounds crazy, but you're going to receive for something you do in a moment, you're going to receive an eternal reward, I, okay, financial advice. You take the money you earn, you invest it, right? In this crazy world, you put it in a bank, you're going to get 1%, right? You invest in something a little more risky, you're going to get 3%. If you're, maybe you get 9%, right? 9%, okay? So you take money you get, you take money you get, and you invest it. It grows. And some people think that's the greatest thing there is. And, oh, my goodness, I'm able to invest money and it grows, you know. And when I'm old, I'm able to take out that money tax-free to do all these things now I'm too old to do. I'm going to save this money. I'm going to take it out tax-free. We're going to travel around the world. I get to be 70 years old. I take my money out tax-free. I'm too darn tired to travel around the world. I'm not traveling around the world. You crazy? The best I can do is, is save, get some kind of interest on my money till the day when I'm so old. But with God... Hey, I invest in something. I get this. I invest in something, and when I get there, I'm young. I'm new again. That makes sense? And everything I invested in, I get to use it as a young man. I get to use it in a brand new world. All of a sudden, it ain't an investment that wears out or, or is, is, you know, it's not old money. But no, it's all, woo, it's all right. President, account, wow. Anybody get that? And I'm not against investing. But kingdom investing has an incredible, eternal reward. Yes. 
Oh boy, I'm running out of time. The prophets inquired about this. You know, the prophets didn't fully understand Jesus and his plan. And man, we live in such a special time. We live in such a special. The prophets, even if we go along here, uh, look, look at the end of this verse. Look at the very bottom of this verse. Things that the angels desired to look into. The angels hadn't even figured out the plan of God for what we're walking in. Hey, it is a revelation to the angel man how God's doing what he's doing and how God forgives and how God did, how God worked the plan, how God was so divine in all of his nature that he works everything together for good. The angels are going, how in the world? The, the angels are buffaloed about this. The prophets could not figure it out even though th there was th things they would speak by God that Jesus was coming and there'd be some glorious future. The prophets didn't understand it. But here we are in the last generation. And we have understanding. You're sitting here in this church right now and you have a greater understanding, even if you're not a theologian in any way, you have a greater understanding than any generation has ever had about the plan of God and the goodness of God. His son Jesus If any generation is going to do it, it'll be this one, right? Yeah? yeah? I wish I could jump just to chapter 2 where it begins to say, you're a chosen people, a holy, holy priesthood, a, 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 a called generation. Yeah, I'm going to get that next week probably, but the, this idea that you were... You don't understand. This is the generation I called. This is the people. My church, my church... A light to the whole wide world. Uh, gird up your loins and mind. Be sober. Rest and rest in the hope fully upon the grace that's been brought to you. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Huh? Tighten up everything. It's a, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a go. But what's it say? But rest fully in the hope. Rest, just rest. You're either, let me say, just, you're either worried to death about everything or, hey, you've come to a place in your faith where you just can rest. I had a grandma respond. There's a lady in her first service, her grandchild, uh, her, her daughter went to wake up her grandchild, and her grandchild wasn't breathing this week. Thought it might have been a seizure, and there had been a little bit of history of seizures in the family. Anyhow, but everything turned out fine. Grandma came forward for special prayer for her grandkid. And I looked at Grandma and said, Grandma, everything turned out good. You prayed, everything turned out good. You're still worried. How about the thought that God does everything? God does everything. What about your family being saved? What if God's doing this stuff to wake up daughter? And what, if, what if you're so caught in the emergency, girl? You're so caught in the emergency that you're missing God does everything with a purpose. And so why aren't you, you're, you're mom and you can't get fired Instead of getting caught up in the emergency, speak the eternal. Yeah. Speak the eternal. You're the one, you're in position. You know, you're up here right now, worried to, worried to death, you know. Woo! And, and we're praying for the little girl and everything. Lord, just bless that little girl and help her. And... But God lets stuff happen in this world. Hey, because he's more concerned about the eternal. And God will let your life blow up, hey, because he's trying to get your attention about eternal things. Right? Grandma. Your mom, your grandma, you can't get fired. That's what's awesome about being a parent. I'm dad, I can't get fired. My kids can't fire me. I can say whatever I want to say. What are they going to do? Get another one? No. So grandma, speak into your kid's life. Speak into your grandkid. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about the love of Jesus. Tell them about, hey, this might have happened to wake us all up. Speak that. Speak, speak, speak. You're worried about your, you're worried about your children having a medical emergency. 
You ought to be worried about their soul. Man, I'm out of time. As obedient children, conform yourselves to the don't conform yourselves to the former lusts. And he gets into this chapter about living holy because he's holy. And about your dress, hey, it is about your dress. It's about what comes out of your mouth. It's about what your brain's thinking. It's about be holy because God's holy. And that's where Peter goes. So if God sets you apart, if God's got all these promises, God all got all these great things, hey. Why don't you live holy? Why don't you live right? Why don't you do right? Do right. Just do right. Wish I had more time. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust, not going back to that old way. Right? Anybody need prayer today? You want to need prayer? You want to come? Anybody need prayer? If you want to need prayer today, you can come right now. I'm going to close us. If you want special prayer? Okay, come, come right now at the end. We'll pray with you, okay? Okay, you can come right now. You can come when we're done. Hey, if you need prayer today, we'll meet you right here and pray with you. You can come right now. You can come when, as we close, okay? Anybody, anybody, anytime. All right? It's not that hard, is it? It's not that hard. Anyone else? There you go. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, 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 hey. That's my friend, man. That's my <laughs> man. That's my man. No, don't embarrass me. Father, thanks for time together. Thank you. Thank you you called us, Lord, you called us. Thank you, Lord, that you called us. Hallelujah. Thank you that you keep us. Lord, it's amazing. It's all amazing. It's all amazing. It's all wonderful. Lord, if we would just understand your plan and walk in it, You want so bad, Lord, for us to just be set apart. You've called us to set us apart. You called us to walk in something you want us to obey in. You want to bless us. You want to keep us. You want us to live holy. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you today. I pray, Lord, that we we begin to realize that you picked us, that you picked us. We, we're a mess sometimes, Lord, but you still picked us. You saw something in us, Lord. You saw something in us that we can't see. Some of us, we can't even see it right now. But you still picked us. Thank you, Lord, that you called me your own. I pray, God, that we'd have a revelation of these things, that our eyes would just open up. God, that we'd, we, we'd think about our time. We'd think about what God's called us to do and be. God, that we'd find our place in the body of Christ. Lord, that you just move us from the stagnant place that we're in, where we get back into worldly thinking and all kinds of that jazz. God, free us from that. Call us to live as your children in your purpose, in your ways. Never let us go, Lord. Thank you for an opportunity to know and serve you. Bless us, Lord, as we walk from this place into these things you have before us. And we'll forever give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming, everybody. We love you. Come back. Come back now and see us, would you?